Once again, good afternoon, everyone. This is John Binda from BPM Online. We're about to get things kicked off here, and thank you for joining the call today. We're very excited to talk about some of the new features in our latest release of 7.12. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get things started here. Uh, and, and just for a couple of quick housekeeping items, uh, we're going to stop uh, a couple times during the presentation to do a quick poll. At that time, we'll be uh, answering any questions uh, that come up. You can enter questions uh, via the chat at any time. We'll keep a tally of those questions and answer them during the break or hopefully at the end of the call. And if we can't get to those questions, we'll still try to follow up with email or something to answer those questions. But again, uh, the whole purpose of today is to talk about the new features of 7.12, the new release. And uh, again, I think for the benefit of the large audience we have for this call, it might make sense to start off with some introductions and a quick uh, background on, on the company. For some quick introductions, we have on the call today with us David Myron, our Chief Evangelist, myself, John Binda, and also Alex Petronenko, our Senior Sales Engineer. And just to give everyone sort of a quick background on the company, I know for a lot of you, uh, partners and customers, this is all uh, familiar stuff, but for a few people that uh, aren't as familiar with BPM Line, I wanted to give them a quick update. Uh, BPM Align has been in business for about 14 years. We currently have about six offices uh, globally. Uh, the team here on the call today is all located in the Boston office. We also have uh, several thousand customers uh, ranging from all sizes. And we also have about 500 partners uh, that provide consulting and uh, implementation services for uh, BPM Online. Right now, uh, the different product offerings are marketing automation, sales automation, service automation, our business applications available through our marketplace and also our BPM Line Studio, our low-code uh, and uh, business process management uh, solution. We've gotten some good recognition from some of the leading analysts out there, including Forrester. Uh, in these two reports, uh, one for uh, the Forrester Wave and one for Dynamic Case Management. In the first, the Wave report, BPM Line was positioned as a leader. We're very happy to hear, hear that news. And also uh, for Dynamic Case Management, listed as a strong performer as well. We've also been included in three other uh, uh, Forrester reports, uh, one for lead to revenue, one for sales force automation, and also one for the uh, service side of our business as well. We've also received some good recognition from some of the leading publications out there and a couple of independent uh, research firms, including Nucleus Research and uh, Ovum as well. One of the things we're most excited about, though, is some recent news, an uh, announcement from CRM Magazine where they picked the 2017 CRM Market uh, Leaders or Awards. And BPM Align was entered in both the enterprise category and also mid-market as well. Uh, so again, in the top five uh, solutions on both enterprise and uh, mid-market. And we were very excited to uh, receive that, uh, that news. This is just a quick sampling of some of our uh, top accounts, some of our global accounts. You can recognize some names here, CityLink, Heinz, Bayer, Align, some brand names. Obviously, these are a lot of our global customers with hundreds if not thousands of users. The product's very scalable. And this is just a quick sampling of some of our larger uh, um, customers. With that, I want to kind of turn things over to David Myron. David's going to be talking about our uh, vision, and I'm going to pass the baton over to David right now. All right, great. Thank you, John. So I just want to uh, talk a little bit about what's going on now uh, in business today. Uh, organizations are realizing that their customers, their partners, their employees are moving at a faster pace than ever. The ability to find, share uh, information has grown exponentially uh, over the years, enabling them to take action, uh, uh, to transact, to interact uh, much, much faster uh, than ever before. Uh, and just some fun facts here. Uh, we've noticed that uh, even the speed of, of, uh, of which the, the people move and it has affected our culture so much so that Pedestrians on the street are walking 10% faster than just a decade ago. Uh, from now until 2020, the amount of information will double every two years. And here's an uh, interesting fun fact. It took 68 years for airlines to reach 50 million users, and it only took Pokemon Go 19 days to reach that same number of users. So just to give you some perspective on how quickly uh, that, uh, that customers and uh, employees and people uh, can react and move uh, in today's digital age. So that then begs the question, does business software meet these expectations today? Uh, unfortunately, nearly three quarters, 72% of Fortune 500 companies feel the single greatest challenge limiting their growth is in fact technology, and that's according to a recent Fortune survey. Of course, that then begs the question, why? Why is this happening? Well, 
At BPM Online, we believe that there are four key areas uh, that are getting in the way of organizations today. And uh, the first being long and painful implementation process. The second is lower user adoption. The third is disconnected applications that create misalignment. And then finally, the inability to, to change quickly. Uh, let's take a look at why this is happening uh, with, uh, with applications that exist today. So first, you'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen, option A is what we call app prolifer proliferation. These are really apps that are uh, best of breed solutions. Uh, you'll find that there are some really great ones out there that uh, can do one or two things really, really well. But the problem with best of breed solutions is that they often don't integrate well with uh, what you have in-house. So anytime you need to make a change or an update, it's, uh, it can be challenging. The other option is uh, full suite software solutions by any one of the vendors listed here. Uh, the problem here is that uh, these vendors uh, generally tend to grow by acquisition. Uh, and that means that they're purchasing other suite solutions and sort of bolting them together or giving organizations or clients uh, different options to select from one uh, or the other, but they're not built from the ground up uh, to work together. So you, you kind of have a similar situation where you've got, yes, a full suite solution, but full suite solution from different organizations. You might have three to five different SFA solutions from one vendor. You might have uh, three or more uh, marketing automation solutions from another vendor. So uh, picking the one that's best for your organization uh, might look good initially, but trying to make any changes, customization, can prove to be challenging there as well. So neither option really makes it easy or fast to change. Uh, so how do we address this? Well, at BPM Online, we believe there are four key areas that organizations need to focus on to address this. The first being that technology implementation should take days, not months or years. And the second one being that rapid adoption is critical to success. And the third element is ongoing transfer transformation needs orchestration or alignment across teams and applications. And then finally, change is the new normal and businesses need to be able to adapt at will. So how do we do this? How do we, how do we accomplish uh, these four things at BPM Online? Well, we've got a unique synergy of intelligent B BPM platform and unified CRM system uh, that we offer. So what we do is we take the uh, CRM system, which includes sales and marketing, service and business applications, and we overlay it on top of the BPM Studio. BPM Studio, of course, being a low-code platform that enables organizations to automate processes across the entire business. So doing this enables organizations to address the four key challenges that I mentioned before, which is the implementation, uh, adoption, alignment, and change uh, challenge, and accelerate each one of those. How does it do it? Well, uh, with the BPM Studio and the CRM uh, system, Organizations can accelerate implementation using out-of-the-box capabilities that end users can use right away. Uh, then in stage two or phase two, the adoption phase, uh, organizations can accelerate their adoption with intelligent and user-friendly, a user-friendly uh, user experience and UI. And then uh, on the alignment stage, we believe the best way to go is to accelerate alignment with cross-functional orchestration. And then for the fourth and final stage, uh, we believe that organizations can accelerate change with an agile, low-code platform. What this slide shows is how B uh, CRM and the BPM Studio does that. So on the right side, you've got what the CRM uh, system offers, which is the uh, uh, out-of-the-box capabilities for the adoption stage. Uh, attendee, uh, uh, users can uh, use those systems right away. They're, they're uh, fully functional right out of the box, uh, so they can get started without much delay at all. And then the uh, adoption stage on the lower right with uh, some great artificial intelligence and user-friendly uh, UX uh, in the CRM system, uh, users can leverage the AI, for example, to uh, make uh, next best step recommendations uh, and use a user-friendly UI and get a user-friendly user experience out of the application that people really enjoy using. On the uh, BPM Studio side, on the left-hand side, the lower left on, regarding alignment, uh, 
we believe that BPM Studio accelerates alignment with cross-functional orchestration. So if one change needs to be made to any one of the, the application, uh, it can be done so, and it's, uh, it's seamlessly connected uh, across the organization. Uh, and then finally, the uh, change component. Uh, because BPM Studio is a, a low-code platform, uh, it doesn't take uh, uh, people with uh, professional coders to come in and, and, and do all the, the heavy lifting. Some of it can actually be done by business analysts, which is something that our clients really love. All right, so I addressed the four key pillars uh, of adoption, of implementation, adoption, alignment, and change. Uh, but now it's time to talk about the fun stuff, and that is how did we take those four pillars and apply it to the 7.12 release? So with that, I'd like to call on John to get things started. Uh, John. Uh, regarding 7.12, uh, we're launching an advanced marketing campaign engine with a number of improvements, including new campaign elements. Can you tell us more about it? Absolutely, Dave. Uh, this is actually the second version of our uh, campaign engine, and uh, it's really built on, on our strong business process engine, which makes it fully customizable. The whole goal here was to really kind of accelerate performance, uh, improve the reliability of the engine, and also expand on its functionality. So really, uh, of course, bringing this all together uh, unified under one BPM engine, and it's one that our users are very familiar with and, and very uh, happy using. So what exactly have we included in the new release? Well, in this release, we've improved the integration of landing pages and events into uh, campaigns. As for landing pages and web forms, any new lead coming in uh, or an order from a website can be automatically added into necessary campaigns uh, within the system itself. As for events, we now have bi-directional synchronization with campaigns, so there's no need to manually upload a list or, or add a list to filters uh, to an existing event or campaign. Uh, that information uh, is, is synchronized automatically. All right, and uh, so with uh, 7.12, we eliminate the need for marketers to build dynamic groups to add contacts to the events or to build dark target audience uh, for, for the event-related campaign, right? Yeah, you know, for these most frequent kind of use cases, we now have a lot of out of the box uh, solutions uh, in, in the in the product. I think we're looking to significantly accelerate both the implementation time frame and the actual work done by the users uh, inside the product. That sounds great. Is there anything else that you can share? Of course, uh, there's some other uh, great uh, features, especially on the marketing side, around the start time of campaigns. Uh, using a new timer. You can now configure any start time of a campaign element or an entire branch of a campaign. For an example, if you want to make sure your emails are sent out only on working days and during working hours, you can now use the timer element to uh, to improve on that. We also can specif specify time frames for campaign branches, uh, making sure that you don't send out notices about an event uh, once the event is over. And finally, uh, the last thing is that uh, the time timer element supports work with different time zones. Uh, each of your clients will get a newsletter exactly at 9 a.m., regardless of the uh, time zone the actual BPM line user is in. And what about email marketing capabilities? Are there any updates there? Yeah, a lot of the uh, new improvements around the uh, mass email statistics and it, it, its look and feel We've made the interface just a little bit cleaner and uh, offered more information through, through dashboards. Uh, a lot of the work was also done sort of under the hood. Uh, making sure that those mass email stats were delivered in much faster, much uh, you know, efficient way, and giving the information to the marketing people as quickly as possible, so they can make adjustments or decisions on on future campaigns. All right. So uh, with that, I'd like to now take a look under the hood and bring Alex into the discussion. Alex, what innovations does BPM Online work on in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning? Um, sure. Well. As the data is, uh, you know, is increasing, the amount of the data that the users need to process is increasing. Uh, it is obvious that, uh, you know, when you get 200 leads assigned to you as a business development representative, uh, you can't just, you know, easily navigate through that volume of data and um, take into account the history of the communication that the company had with similar companies and leads before to better, you know, take into account what might be the hot lead out of all of the 200. And uh, this is where the machine learning capabilities are actually coming in, where the system is uh, predictably scoring the data uh, in the application, really, you know, prioritizes the way that the users are approaching their work. Wow, so that could take, uh, that could save hundreds of hours for our clients, no? Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just about saving time of the users and making them more efficient, 
but actually increasing the uh, you know the speed of the implementation of the application to the company's business. And uh, the best thing is that the mechanisms are really universal, and we can apply scoring not just to the lead records, but to, uh, for instance, opportunities, cases, and uh, accounts if needed. All right. Well, this this usually requires a a fairly complex infrastructure because machine learning is is quite an advanced technology that requires a lot of resources. No. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the way that we're managing this is by deploying a separate cloud service uh, that safely, uh, you know, transfers the data that is encrypted and is automatically connected to every instance of VPN line that's being deployed, uh, just so that every time that our client signs up with the with with the system and with the solution, uh, they can leverage the uh, machine learning capabilities straight away without jumping through any extra hoops. All right. Thank you, Alex. Uh, John, both our technical support and our new clients in the cloud have already started using 7.12. Is there any feedback about the service management capabilities that you can share? What do they like the most? Uh, sure, Dave. I think uh, one of the areas that they really uh, like is around mobility. Uh, now agents on their way into the office uh, on their mobile device can actually open up a case, read the history, and even engage the right people to, uh, to push the uh, case to resolution. So I think uh, from the service side, again, the enhancements on the mobility side are, are really a big thing. And also for our global clients, much like BPM Line ourselves, uh, we have now the ability to have multilingual uh, service email templates. Uh, you can now customize templates in different languages. And instead of having them on one long list, the system is intelligent enough to automatically determine the required language of uh, the agent's response. So, uh, you know, we don't have to, you know, waste time on searching through a long list of templates to find the right one. The system's automatically going to offer you ones in the correct language, and again, a big time saver and really accelerating the service that our, our customers can offer. That's great. Uh, so, what else do our uh, support technicians say about the new functionality? Well, I think they really like the ability to create uh, a new case uh, coming out of a text uh, in a client's email, so we can look for keywords in the e body of the email, and based on those keywords, create a case automatically. Uh, and even has the ability to uh, look at several questions in email and decide to create either separate cases off that or to assign that to a senior technical uh, agent to answer all the questions uh, in the body of that email. So again, getting the response a lot faster, putting in the right uh, you know uh, hands of the right people to answer those questions as quickly as possible. All right. Um, what about our clients? What do they love the most? Well, I think uh, our clients are really starting to, to actually look for different applications and solutions uh, from our marketplace. Over the past few months, we've seen a lot of new uh, performance accelerators uh, for service management. One of the really cool ones uh, has to do with polling and questionnaire and survey management, uh, giving you templates uh, for email notifications uh, and things like that. We also have a number of connectors to various messengers uh, designed to really expand the list of communication channels with the existing customers. And uh, are there any other innovations uh, on the uh, re regarding other channels on the marketplace for service management? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of buzz out there today about chatbots, and we have uh, a chatbot designer from our partner, Bsender. Uh, you can actually connect to a Skype, Facebook, Messenger, and, and, and website widgets, and you can actually configure the bots, the logic, directly in our process designer. So, again, Make it easier for them to uh, to work with the bots, and again, that's another way of communicating with the uh, with the customers. And any updates for sales management, and sales operations in VPM Online? Sure, I think that some of the key improvements are really around the report templates that we have. Again, we did a lot uh, of work within the dashboards, and as far as some templates uh, for reports, we have templates for sales management that can include things like uh, looking at a list of upcoming meetings, looking at the top five open deals or maybe looking at uh, key clients that might be requiring a little bit more attention. So that's on the sales side. For the operations side, again, some nice report templates that uh, give operations the information they need as quickly as possible. Uh, some of their reports might be tracking things like overdue payments, uh, overdue deliveries, those type of things. And then beyond that, uh, we actually have on the marketplace uh, a couple of things that track expensive account expense accounting and also invoice margin calculation. Uh, so, again, with these different templates, you can get immediate access to the key information you need, especially for either sales or operations. Again, getting the information to them faster so they can make those decisions uh, faster as well. All right. Uh, thank you for that, John. All right. So, let's uh, turn to Alex. Uh, Alex, uh, we all know that PPM Online goes far beyond CRM. What other marketplace offerings are there? 
Well, um, there are a lot of uh, marketplace add-ons that do take VPN online far beyond just the regular CRM, right? It can just completely uh, change the studio app, for example, that you're using. But somewhat related to the CRM, I would say that there are two apps, which are the, um, the HRM and the franchise management add-ons. Uh, where you can really make part of your application the process of hiring new employees and you know providing them the access to the system to be able to post vacancies and to really you know search through your uh, candidate CVs uh, that are you know added to BPM online and uh, if you're in a franchise type of business you can really have the database of all your franchisees and manage the relationship on one to one point and you know manage their uh, budgets and uh, financial side of the uh, you know the relationship all right thank you uh, for that Alex so uh, we talked about the first core pillar uh, uh, the, which is around implementation now I'd like to move on to adoption uh, and uh, I want to talk about how 7.12 helps uh, uses accelerate adoption with uh, artificial intelligence and a user-friendly UI. Uh, so with that, let's let's just jump right in. John, what was the focus of our research and development for enhancements to amplify user adoption in this release? Uh, sure, Dave. I think you know we've always had a very strong focus on user adoption here at BPM Online, and in this release, the R&D group was really kind of focused on improvements to the most commonly used pieces of functionality. We wanted to make the interface a little bit lighter. We wanted to simplify it and really improve the work with capabilities used by our users every day. So really focus on the on the key things that they need to do each and every day and make that even easier for them to do. Again, speed things up, simplify things, and, and give them a much higher level of user adoption. And what do you think our customers will love the most with regard to user adoption? Well, I think if I had to choose myself, and, uh, and I'm obviously a strong user of BPM Online, but I would probably give my first choice to the uh, updates on the dashboard section. Uh, if you see the new dashboard section, it's much lighter, much easier on the eyes. Uh, you can actually create uh, special complex tabular reports, uh, which we didn't have before. And now you can have as many columns as you need to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, show the interface uh, on, on the dashboards. And you also have the ability to expand these into full screen, which I like a lot because I spend a lot of time looking at reports and being able to see them in more greater detail, just blown up uh, full screen is also also a big help. Wow, that's great. So it looks like uh, I won't need to view reports and analytics in Excel ever, ever, ever again. Well, I'm not going to say Excel is going to go away because I don't think that will ever happen. But wow. uh, I think uh, a lot of our clients, one of the first questions they ask is, can I get all this data and put it into Excel? And they say, well, that's not the goal here. We want you to use CRM and stay within the dashboards within CRM. But obviously, there's requirements for some uh, of our customers to move uh, data into Excel. We've always had that capability with our dashboards. And now we give you that, uh, we extend that capability to any list view that you have. You can easily export that into a comfortable format in Excel. Uh, and that's, again, uh, for our clients that need to use that data outside of the platform itself. All right, great. Thanks for that. Uh, so what other user adoption improvements can we see in the new version? Well, I think uh, one area that we really kind of uh, spent a lot of time on was uh, reconfiguring the uh, columns for all list setups, uh, making it much easier to customize. Uh, it's always been easy to uh, configure these, but now we make it even easier there's a ability to preview it right away so you can see, uh, you know, how your uh, your uh, list looks and your columns. Uh, and this actually shortens the uh, configuration time. Again, speed to value and getting things done a lot faster. Uh, and that's what we've done with, uh, with 7.12. Okay. So uh, what can make the daily routine not only for business analysts but for salespeople easier? Well, one of the things that uh, I like a lot about the system is the new timeline feature we now have a special tab uh, along with history and everything else to track uh, the uh, all the events for a particular contact or all the history in a chronological order. So you can always see what the latest activity was, whether it was an email, a phone call, or, or some type of activity. Uh, and that's all for opportunities, cases, uh, contacts, and accounts. Uh, but you can also add this uh, feature to any section in the system that uh, you think would be helpful. All right, great. Thank you, John. Let's uh, bring Alex back into the discussion. Alex, can you tell me a little bit more about how our research and development prioritizes features and decides what to include in a new release? Sure. I mean, uh, one of the greatest sources for you know uh, feature prioritization uh, is really our uh, customer voice feedback program, uh, where we are you know listening to what our customers saying from multiple uh, channels. 
through our support, through our academy, uh, through our community questions, right? And um, a lot of things that are added to the functionality of VPN Online are actually sourced from uh, from that program. But, and can you give me an example of the uh, functionality that we imp implemented based on end user requests? Sure. I mean, uh, it's sometimes it's just the small things like having the ability to copy a dynamic folder together with all of its uh, filtering conditions. Just so that if you need to use something similar that you already have, but it's slightly different or you know somewhat different, uh, you don't have to spend time recreating that from scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. I think our users will appreciate that uh, very much. Thanks for that. Uh, Alex, uh, I know there are many out-of-the-box applications on the marketplace uh, enabling you to change data representation in the system. Can you tell me any more about that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, one of my favorite ones uh, among all of the great apps on the marketplace is the Kanban view for the records. Uh, that is automatically, you know, enabled in every section where you've got the dynamic case management framework uh, enabled and kind of allows you to uh, control your pipeline, whether those are opportunities, leads, or um, even uh, cases, right, uh, on a higher level perspective. Right, just so that you can quickly manage uh, the pipeline and uh, push the records to the next stage, for example, for instance. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, of course, there are more things that are as well very helpful uh, for our you know end users. Uh, for example, the ability to set up the summaries over the details, so you don't need to ask for any kind of extra design of the application, the metric side, but you've got the overall uh, revenue coming from all the opportunities uh, any, any, at any point. Uh, being able to, you know, have uh, conditional highlighting of the records in the record list based on their status or category or any other value also gives you, uh, you know, huge value in um, helping the users quickly define those records that they should uh, work on as the first priority, for example. And, uh, you know, even small things as just simply changing the uh, the mode of the application to a dark theme uh, that makes it easier to read the application for some user or at some uh, time of the day. It's just my uh, personal personal favorite. All right, great. Well, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Uh, John, uh, do you have anything else that you can share uh, on the marketplace for uh, user adoption enhancement? Uh, sure. There's actually lots of examples, Dave, and, and just a couple that come to mind uh, from our Partner Webricks, uh, they actually created a, uh, an add-on to streamline the process of working with the duplicate records. We know the BPM line has always been good at identifying duplicate records and giving options to merge those records. But now with the Webricks add-on, you can actually build rules that will be applied to automatically merge those records together. Again, a big time saver. And I think most of our clients have had issues with duplicates, uh, especially if they have larger databases. And this is just one uh, big time saver for them to not only identify those uh, duplicates, but actually automatically merge them uh, together. Another good example of an add-on is enabling uh, uh, our customers to do a revision history on attached documents. Uh, you can easily keep uh, you know, version control of attached files in any section uh, of the BPM Online system, and that's something that a lot of our clients had, had asked about uh, over the past. Oh, that's great. Thanks, John. Uh, another uh, area, hot area, that uh, uh, that's come up is gamification. Uh, John, uh, how can uh, our users engage the system uh, systems to increase their efficiency and quickly reach the necessary key performance indicators? Again, we're always looking for ways to, to do this, and there are a number of applications on the marketplace that help this. Uh, one of the specific ones is connected to the gamification platform, Rallyware. With Rallyware, you can actually do uh, corporate training, educational uh, programs, and things like that, but also create... Uh, competitive, uh, um, you know, contest for sales groups measuring, uh, you know, uh, key uh, performance indicators across multiple areas uh, using gamification tactics. And I think that's something that users appreciate, but it also drives uh, uh, productivity as well. All right. And John, can you talk about uh, what the selection process is for posting an application to the marketplace? Sure. Obviously, anything that's uh, added to the marketplace is obviously vetted uh, by our own internal people, but we really want to keep it as an open marketplace. Uh, what I mean by that is we have a slogan that we kind of publish everything we possibly can on the marketplace. And I'm not just talking about add-ons or connectors from partners. We also encourage our clients to upload templates that they've uh, built, uh, examples of business processes that they've used and been successful on. So it's really a mix of a lot of things from clients and partners 
Uh, some of them are free, some of them are available for a fee, uh, but there's a lot of uh, things available and I encourage everyone to uh, check out the marketplace and, and go back regularly because we're constantly adding new uh, uh, applications to the marketplace every day. All right, thanks, John. So we uh, already covered two of the four key uh, pillars, uh, implementation and adoption, and how the 7.12 release uh, is addressing those two key pillars. Now, uh, you should see, let's take a little break, uh, you should see a poll popping up on your screen uh, with the question, how many applications is your company using for managing internal and customer-facing processes and communications? Please select one from the following, one to three, three to five, 5 to 10, 10 to 25, or more than 25. And while we're waiting for the poll results to show, we have some uh, questions coming in from our audience that uh, we'd like to answer. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, answer those questions. Uh, one of the questions coming in uh, is, are all cloud-based BPM platforms already upgraded uh, to 7.12? So the the uh, the answer to this is uh, is uh, is the end of this week. Oh, I just this just came in. So uh, thank you for that uh, excellent question, and uh, we are we appreciate that. The next question coming in is uh, when will this uh, update be available uh, for users? And uh, the answer to that question is immediately. It's available right now. So uh, uh, with that, it looks like the poll results are coming in so why don't we go ahead and take a look at those uh, so in response to the question how many applications is your company using for managing internal and customer facing processes and communications uh, it looks like one to three led the way with the, uh, oh, no it looks like it just changed three to five now leads the way with 40% uh, one to three lead, uh, comes in second with 34% and uh, finishing in third is uh, five to ten percent uh, at eighteen uh, percent, and then uh, ten to twenty-five. We have some uh, in the ten to twenty-five range uh, at eight percent. So an interesting, interesting uh, smattering of results there. This actually leads uh, or segues well into the next pillar that we're going to talk about, which is alignment. So uh, you know, this is uh, an important stage in any automation process. You know, setting up integration with all systems that are using that are used uh, in the organization. You know, it's um, it's it's difficult to imagine a process that's uh, performed using one single information system, uh, as uh, you know, our poll results show that uh, clearly isn't the case for many uh, of our viewers. Our orchestration block is dedicated to to these aspects, and this is one of our key focuses in the 7.12 release. John, can you share some insights about enhancements to our orchestration capabilities? Sure, absolutely, David. As you mentioned, I think this is one of the more exciting uh, parts of our release and really gives uh, some real power to our, our business analysts working with the system. We've always had the ability to uh, configure the system and give you tools to build processes and workflows. Now, using the same tools, we can actually do integration to third-party applications. We can actually embed external systems directly into a business process. So now business analysts can actually be in charge of integration uh, to third-party applications and exchanging data back and forth using tools they're already familiar with. So there are a lot of different uh, connectors for obvious uh, uh, integrations on our marketplace, uh, but now with this powerful tool for the citizen developer, uh, business analysts that are familiar with the uh, process engine can now, uh, with web services, build integration directly into uh, BPM Online. I think this is very exciting because, again, as you see from the poll, uh, most of our customers have several points of, of integration, and if there's no out-of-the-box connector for that, that can be very time-consuming and very expensive, but now we give them the tools to do it themselves, and that's always been uh, part of our core offering. All right, thanks, John. Uh, you know, one of our clients has recently mentioned it's using 38 different IT products, if you can believe that. Wow. Uh, yeah, and, and, and they see a huge challenge in unifying all those products in one digital ecosystem. With all the updates to BPM Online 7.12, John, do you think the developers will have no work to do in the near future? I think there'll always be work for the developers, Dave. I think uh, there's always been a kind of a shortage of developer talent. I don't care how big the company is, but uh, one thing we hear from our customers is we don't want to have to keep on relying on our IT department or the developers to get things done. 
So what we've done with our platform, obviously, is to give users without technical skills the ability to change the system, uh, to customize its business logic, and now to even set up integration uh, of VPN line with third-party systems with no developers involved. So let the developers do what they have to do. Let the business users get what they need to done, be done faster and easier. And that's what we're doing with the platform today. Okay. So what do users need to know to set up a new integration? Well, this might be over my pay grade from a technical standpoint, but I know with the, the new customization integration with web services, uh, it doesn't require any software or developer skills. You can now set up web service integration uh, with the new section, uh, and you can use, uh, and it can be used by all BPMN business processes as well. Uh, for example, uh, using a web service, uh, you can configure the update uh, for exchange rates, integration with Google Maps, uh, GoToWebinar, even Jira, and many other systems. And uh, uh, which planned enhancements does our research and development team have on their roadmap for orchestration? So for the roadmap and some things we're working on for the future, Dave, I think uh, obviously we want to continue working on, uh, you know, the capabilities for the citizen developer, whether it's integration or, or configuration, making it easier and easier to work with. Uh, we also uh, have plans to support uh, post uh, SQL database, giving you an option uh, beyond SQL and Oracle uh, for your database of choice. And talking about integration, I keep seeing a lot of new connectors and out-of-the-box integrations that allow unifying scattered systems even faster being added to our marketplace. What's your favorite? Well, as I said before, there's many of them out there, but I think uh, two that we really hear a lot about are the Azure Active Directory uh, integration and also the connector to uh, Facebook uh, lead service. Can you tell me more, more about that? Sure. Obviously, uh, Azure Active Directory is a cloud-based directory and identi identity management uh, solution and now uh, that provides single sign-on to any business application. BPMLine now supports integration with Azure AD out of the box, uh, and these, this integration template that simplifies the setup of integration and is trusted by uh, Microsoft Azure. As far as Facebook's lead connectors go, uh, we have uh, a connector developed by our partner Oric Systems. It allows you to easily receive leads from uh, advertising campaigns on Facebook. So the connector, the way it works, is it automatically saves data from a form submitted by a user on Facebook, brings it into the system, and then can kick off any kind of lead management process you have in place. There's one more uh, add-on that I want to mention. It's uh, called a call tracker. And this is interesting because it's an application that allows uh, users to automatically transfer uh, call logs from an Android smartphone uh, to BPM Align with an option of actually recording uh, the conversation. And this application was developed by our partner, Magnetic One. All right, great. Thank you for that, John. So uh, we wrapped up the, uh, the the pillar around uh, alignment and how seven, the 7.12 release addresses uh, the need to accelerate alignment within organizations. Uh, I just want to also remind our viewers that we will have a question and answer at the end of the uh, broadcast. So if you have a question during uh, the presentation, just type it into the question box provided and click on the submit button. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible during the live event, but if we're not able to answer your question uh, during the event, uh, we, someone will respond to you within a few days. Okay, now on to the fourth and final pillar, uh, which is around accelerating change. Uh, this is uh, 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 critical for organizations that uh, in the, compete in the digital era. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, organizations need to be able to drive change uh, and adapt at will. So this section will be divided into two sections, tools for developers and tools for analysts. With that, I'd like to call on Alex uh, with, uh, to, to answer a few questions that I have around accelerating change and how the 7.12 tools uh, do that. So Alex, I know that we, uh, we've made a huge effort to simplify the development process in, in the 7.12 release. What do you think is the most interesting? Um, sure. Um, well, not only have we simplified the development process, but as well the configuration process of BPM Align by the citizen developers, or uh, you know, more classically known as business analysts. Uh, the idea behind it was that uh, no business can adapt to a rapidly changing uh, environment uh, of, you know, their business reality without having flexible tools for, uh, you know, modifying and uh, changing their core business application, which BPM Alliance has always been amongst our clients. And uh, this is where 
you know, we are introducing the tools for business process management, for a case management framework, and of course for you know um, user interface and data model changes uh, in t together with the application. All right. Uh, can you uh, can you tell us more about the uh, capabilities of 7.12 that are uh, aimed at helping companies change and adapt faster? Sure. One of the uh, core you know uh, features that we've uh, introduced uh, to the process management engine specifically was being able to use a uh, templated user interface that is not connected to any data model of the application, just so that the business analyst can quickly design. A custom entry form, uh, you know, dynamically populated with data coming from different sources of the application, uh, just so the users can kind of see an aggregated view, update the information, and then the process itself can run, uh, you know, the rest of the data manipulation and data updates. And um, in addition to that, of course, the process library has been, uh, you know, uh, simplified as well, where the uh, analysts can now actually easily see what are different processes based on or centered around specific objects of the uh, of the solution and what is the you know method of their execution if they are um, you know executed manually or as through a SOC process uh, if they are executed and triggered by a data signal or even by a timer events okay uh, Alex, uh, can I identify mistakes and bottlenecks in my process in advance? Absolutely, and this is where the, you know, the uh, the data tracer uh, comes very handy because debugging or testing a stage in the design of the process has always been uh, critical, right? And even after the process has been designed and distributed amongst the users, the analysts need to have a way to see if it is actually operating data correctly. If the users are uh, interfacing with the process in the way that they should. If the process itself is uh, managing, manipulating, and uh, transforming the data in the way that it should. All right. Uh, with regard to change in the, the the world, the digital world we live in today, it's 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 around uh, accelerating change, the need for speed, right? So, is there anything else that you can uh, talk about that's uh, related to BPM and the ability to change quickly? Sure. Uh, you know, a few more things. Not only related to BPM that are, you know, uh, accelerating the way that the users are as well uh, working with the application is the fact that we have now moved the execution of the processes uh, completely to the background, so not connecting to the client side, um, where the end user is not affected by the process execution. He just gets the end result of the uh, process, uh, you know, running behind the scenes, which is either a new task has been, uh, you know, scheduled for him or some data is being updated. And uh, addition to that, of course, the uh, changes to the data model user interface are now being completed faster than ever, uh, where you know the section wizard has been completely revamped under the hood, uh, running all the compilations uh, without you know with the compilations not happening on the client side as well. All right, it sounds like a pretty extensive list of updates. Yeah, and there's another one that is again. Uh, Rather small, I would say, but rather critical for the end users, where the uh, you know system administrators can easily uh, turn off some of the lookup values to be used uh, in the application. It's still going to be preserved for historic data, for instance, for reporting purposes. But the uh, end users don't need to relearn uh, to not use some of the drop-down values, uh, but can you know sim simply work with what is relevant uh, for the business right now. Oh, that sounds great. So uh, what other enhancements could uh, be helpful for business analysts or uh, citizen developers? Well, I would as well outline the fact that we can now set up the mobile application uh, in a completely different way, where into the record list we can bring up, as you know, as a system administrator, uh, enough data for the end user to quickly define the right record uh, to look at and to work with from the mobile app. Uh, and of course, you know, having the ability to manage complex access rights and permission setup in the application is also rather important, where we can distribute the access rights to, um, you know, objects related to a parent object, for example, to an account, and to where the subordinate objects would be his opportunities or uh, its address details or communication options, uh, in the same way that they're being set up for the parents. So, you know. More ways of streamlining the design and the uh, uh, you know configuration of the application. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Alex. Um, anything uh, interesting to report uh, on the marketplace for business analysts? 
yeah, one of the things that was as well added that is kind of working in addition to uh, you know to our out of the box functionality is having the ability to manage the printable forms uh, and uh, reports directly within the uh, within the application, not having to export the templates and work in a third party app, but have this available uh, you know within DPM Online interface. All right, thanks, Alex. So. Uh, the last thing that a user wants to have when creating something new and effective is distraction, right? Automation of routine, efficient, and uh, efficient processes, and of course, the use of convenient development tools help here. Uh, I know that we made a lot of new features uh, for the convenience of development in this release. Uh, what do you like the most? Sure. I mean, um, it's quite exciting that partners who are developing marketplace add-ons think not only about the end user experience and business analyst experience, but the development experience of BPM Online. And uh, a few things that stand out for me, um, you know, in general, uh, is first of all, the ability for the developers to now work directly with the file system of the application where they can uh, use the JavaScript code that's been uh, processed by a third uh, party application, for instance, and even post uh, static content directly to the CDN, right, which is going to make it easier to manage it uh, in the first place and as well, um, you know, make the performance of the application even uh, a lot better and faster. All right. Uh, and do we have anything new in the mobile application? Yep. Uh, this is where the developers can now actually set up, you know, different means of synchronization of data from the mobile app. If this is, uh, you know, simple data that is covering some of the general update to the invoices or to the accounts, it can be synced straight away because it doesn't take a lot of, uh, you know, broadband uh, to update it in the uh, main application. But if this is high resolution uh, images that need to be, uh, that, you know, field sales uh, or field service representatives take when they're visiting the location, we can set up that piece of data to be synchronized only when the mobile app is uh, connected to uh, to Wi-Fi. Okay, so we we see a lot of new applications on the marketplace. We talked about a few of them. Uh, is there anything for developers in particular? Yeah, for developers again, uh, there are ways of actually, you know, using uh, templated projects in Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, that's going to bring a lot of flexibility for uh, for this role, uh, you know, and bring a lot of um, improvements into the way that they de designed the app. Where, for example, now they can uh, configure uh, and debug cloud applications, uh, you know, from their local machines, which is a huge improvement. All right, great. Thanks for that. Uh, and uh, have one more question before we get to the more interactive portion of our broadcast. Uh, Alex, uh, it's around data management. Data management is one of the hottest topics today. Are there any updates uh, here to report? Yeah, so one of the things that was introduced by one of the partners is the ability to run the uh, database check and the configuration check to see if all of the you know business objects have been designed correctly and uh, if the structure of the database is in place. And uh, for the developers who are starting to work with the, the development of BPM Online, uh, it's also quite um, you know handy to have the ability to export the structure of the and connections of the objects to an Excel, for instance, just so that he or she can actually see how all of these business uh, entities are related to each other, right? And again, this is for the cloud application where they don't have the access to the you know uh, SQL database. And of course, you know, uh, very often um, developers say that sometimes it's easier to quickly develop, you know, a widget or some sort of functionality to BPM Online rather than look for through marketplace. But I don't fully agree here because, you know, even things like map widgets um, are a lot easier to download and use as a template rather than have than have to, you know, develop it from scratch uh, than when you start working with the application. All right, great. Thanks for that, uh, Alex. Uh, uh, so uh, I just want to add that uh, all of these features are currently available, and you can view them on our website at bpmonline.com, where you can uh, take a look at the uh, powerful capabilities of BPM Online products with a 14-day free trial. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, so uh, again, I just want to remind our viewers that uh, we're now heading into the Q&A portion of our broadcast. If you have a question, please type it into the question box provided and click on the submit button. Uh, as I stated earlier, we'll try to get to 
uh, all the questions during the live broadcast, but if we're not able to answer your call, your question during this uh, broadcast, someone will respond to you within a few days. All right, so uh, before we get to our first question, you should see a poll popping up on your screen uh, momentarily, uh, and uh, we'd love for you to fill that out because um, uh, the, uh, we, we really do appreciate your feedback. Uh, the poll question reads, uh, was the webinar interesting and useful for you? Uh, please select one of the four following options. Excellent, very useful. I like the webinar. It was average. Not exactly what I expected. We're hoping that uh, we're getting responses toward the top of that uh, selection. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, move right into the uh, interactive portion of the webinar with our first question from uh, our, uh, our viewers, which reads, how do you access the marketplace to view this? I can take that one, Dave. Uh, obviously, uh, we talked a lot about the marketplace today, and there's quite a a lot of different uh, solutions up there. If you go to our main website at bpmonline.com and look at the top of the screen, there'll be uh, um, the word marketplace. Click on that. Uh, you can search and browse through all the different uh, uh, solutions on there. We mentioned before that clients are uploading templates and, and uh, process examples. There's connectors, there's add-on products. Uh, all you need to do is create an account if you're going to download. The download is really one click, and uh, it's then attached to your own instance of BPM Online. Uh, we'd also encourage you to go back uh, quite often because we're constantly adding new offerings to the marketplace, uh, and I think you'll find some really exciting things that will also enhance whether it's the implementation, uh, the uh, the user adoption, uh, or any of the things we've talked about today. Uh, there'll be a lot available in the marketplace. All right, great. Thank you, John. Uh, there's a question coming in uh, that I'd like to uh uh, get to uh, uh, Alex. Um, uh, okay, uh, BPM Online is accessible uh, on any OS platform. Is that right? Um, yeah, actually, it, it is. Uh, whether this is uh, you know desktop uh, operating system or uh, the mobile operating system, so our mobile app and you know the the main application are available across device. All right, great. Thank you for that. Another question for you. Uh, uh, do you have a chat feature for we for websites that can be integrated with uh, CRM? Yeah, actually, the chatbot functionality uh, comes uh, together with the ability to set up a chat widget on the website that is going to be you know, transferring that conversation to BPM line straight away, either for the chatbot itself or for the live agents. Speaking of the chatbot, how does the chatbot designer work? Uh, well, actually, it's uh, you know quite exciting uh, because the chatbot is configured through our process engine. So in the same way that the users uh, design the way that the uh, you know the application is uh, engaging the user by distributing tasks and running some data updates and man manipulation, you can design the way that the chatbot is going to be running the conversation with the client. Right, providing him options to choose from, and then based on the answer, uh, have the conditional flow take the customer to the next step in the conversation, and if needed, of course, route it to the live agent, or simply create a lead, to create a follow-up activity uh, for the users of the main application. All right, uh, another question coming in for you, uh, for you, Alex. How does the timeline compare to the feed? Well, uh, they are uh, rather different, I would say. The feed is usually more of an internal collaboration tool for the uh, users of the application to run discussions and to run conversations and to minimize the number of emails going back and forth between the users, while the timeline automatically tracks uh, lots of objects uh, of the application that are related uh, to, let's say, an account and uh, to place the view over what basically happened from the opportunity standpoint or activity standpoint or case uh, in a you know, chronological order. All right, uh, thank you, Alex. So we have a, another question coming in. Uh, someone wrote, uh, hi, I'm just checking out BPM Online currently, but I did want to ask, how often do you have these updates? Well, the uh, minor uh, application updates and upgrades are uh, happening every three, four weeks. Uh, the release schedule is available on uh, our academy together with the description of the features that are going to be introduced or improved uh, and major upgrades are happening every three four uh, three three times a year I would say all right great thank you for that uh, we have another question here uh, does your CRM tool offer any form of email marketing campaigns or do you have to get the, the BPM online marketing module which is 
an additional cost per user? Well, uh, in order to be able to run some um, email marketing, uh, I would suggest using our module for uh, uh, marketing, right? Because it can not just connects BPM online sales, for instance, to a marketing application, but really makes it part of the whole platform, one database, right? Which, of course, provides a lot of uh, flexibility and ease of use to the, uh, you know, to the marketing department, to the sales department, and to the business development representatives. Okay. Let me add to that, Dave, too. Is I a lot, this question comes up a lot in our demonstrations. You can include uh, an email as part of a business process on, on any of the, our modules, but what the marketing uh, automation module does for you is capture statistics on the effectiveness of those email campaigns. So if you want to see uh, what's working, what's not working, it's helpful to have those uh, statistics to work with, and for that, you actually do need the marketing automation module. All right, thank you both for that. It looks like we have time for just one more question, uh, and that question uh, is for Alex. Alex, uh, is it possible to build a new custom predictive scoring models? Absolutely. Uh, all of the you know all of the uh, uh, machine learning models are available in the designated uh, section of BPM Online, where the users can actually see how uh, accurate they are, what are the parameters that are being used. And that's where they can as well design custom ones uh, that are going to be automatically, uh, you know, sent over to our cloud service. So, and it's not only just about the scoring of the data uh, in BPM Online, but as well having the ability to set up, you know, some look of value uh, predictions on what was the most likely value to be used is also very uh, helpful for our clients. All right. Well, Alex, thank you very much. John, also thank you for your time. Uh, and I'd also like to thank our viewers for listening in. We hope you appreciated this. And uh, we also hope to see you at one of our upcoming global events. Thank you.